water really feels like it's here. It's a chilly, chilly three degrees out today, but the sun is shining. Oh, I am so thankful for the warm, warm sunshine. Bok, I'm Mandio. This is Grow, Make, Cook, and welcome to my garden. I grew up in Australia in a permaculture family, but after we got married, Mr. O and I moved here to his home country of Croatia. I am a passionate and hands-on homemaker and gardener, and I love life's simple pleasures. So join me on my journey, and together we can learn to grow, make, and cook. This is the fourth week in November, or Studeni. Oh, how lovely. Oh, it's great stuff to go on your compost heap. Now that I have finally found some time to start sorting out my spring and summer project that I had planned and prepared for back in spring and summer, but haven't really had a chance to do until, you know, things in the garden slowed down a little bit and there was a lot less jobs to do all the time, I've started to think about how I'm going to spin my garden string. My plan is to make a simple spindle or vreteno and what we're going to then do is add a little bit of a weight but the first thing I need for my spindle is a long straight stick and I'm thinking that this here dogwood which needs to come out anyway because it's going to be right next to our greenhouse site looks like a nice straight stick to try and get that going. The first thing to do with your nice straight bit of stick is to take off the bark. When you're doing this, always be sure that you're cutting away from yourself so that if it gets stuck on a little knot or join like that, that you're not nicking yourself or cutting towards yourself in any way. Always work away from yourself. But stripping all that bark off will allow it to dry out quicker so that we can sand it and make the point on the end. Now, if I was making a lap spindle, which is actually traditional in this part of the world, if you look up lap spindles some of the best examples are found here in Croatia and in nearby Serbia and nearby Bosnia. So for traditional spinning of thread here in the kind of Balkan areas of the world, a lap spindle, which is basically just a straight stick with a pointed end, is very normal. And you would spin by resting it and rolling your thread onto it onto your spindle, rolling it onto it like that on your lap. But I prefer a drop spindle, which means that I need a little bit of a weight. And you think of it like a spinning top. So because I'm going to need something to help my spindle spin, Mr. O has been very, very generous and cut me just a little thin slice off of one of our firewood logs. Now, in order to prepare my little bit here, I need to also take the bark off of that so that I can make sure it's nice and round. And it's going to take a little bit of shaping to get all of this. And I might even have to cut this bit off the edge and reshape it so that this is nice and round. The idea of this is that then I can drill a hole here I've started already just with the tip of my knife, but I'm going to have to drill a big enough hole here that I can slot it down over my spindle. And in order to do that, 
I'm going to have to mark the line. So this would be the bottom of my spindle. And then here, I'll mark a line with my knife, just so I'm cutting those long fibers downwards. Cutting that just so that I can work up to a straight line that goes across so that when I put my weight down onto it, it'll sit on that wider bit. <laughs> making a spindle, making any tool really, but making a spindle is going to take a little bit of time. I also need to wait for this wood to dry out before I can really sand it and smooth it. So I'm going to have to strip it, well finish stripping the bark off of it today, leave it for a couple of days and then probably next week we'll get back to finishing the actual construction of it. <laughs> with all the rain this week, there is one problem with these bird feeders that has become very apparent. And the first bit about that is that it's all wet. It started to get mouldy and all the seed is all yucky and wet. And secondly, it started to rot. So these bird feeders, they need replacing. But I am a very lucky person. My lovely hubby, Mr. O, has made me a special gift for the birds. He has built me a timber bird feeder, which is delightful. However, I would like to test my own ideas about making a bird feeder. Now, the idea of this one is that it will be much more enclosed. I've got just an old bottle and I'm going to cut two archways out of it so that they can get in to get at where I'm going to put the food. I'm also making a little flat bit at the top here so that when I cut this out, I can lift it to make a little cover or, you know, roof on the edge of it. You'll see. But this is so that I can test whether or not the birdies prefer a more enclosed design that kind of gives them a bit of shelter, I guess, or whether they prefer the more open design where they can scout out and see what's going on that Mr. O has built. I'm starting by just making a little hole so I can get my scissors into the archway. Just pop that back away. And then I'm just going to cut out along the bottom here and then up to, I would say, three quarters up and then up to my line. But I'm going to cut across so that I can make a little roof. Alrighty, and then I'll just fold him up like that and give him a little bit of a rain roof. I'll just do the same thing on the other side. I'm a sucker for pretty things and I love squiggly, scribbly artwork and so I'm just going to decorate with a whole lot of little squiggles and doodles all little, I don't know, squiggly things that I'm just drawing all over it. This is more for my own pleasure than for the birds. <laughs> I guess I could do this all day. We best move on and then I'll come back to this on my own time. My next step is to just poke some holes with a thumbtack underneath my entrances and this is so I can thread a little stick through to act 
as a little perch because we've learned that the birdies really like that so I'll just grab one of my handy kebab sticks again and we'll just poke that into those holes get rid of the pointy bits Good. all right and then the next step is with a little bit of string so I've tied a big old knot in one end to make a loop and I've threaded that loop through a great big wool needle I've also already poked a little hole in the lid and so all I'm going to do is thread it through that hole so that the knot sits on the inside of the lid and the loop will sit on the outside to hang it up by. With that string pulled tight I'll just take that needle off, pop it into my basket for safekeeping, pop the lid back on, we'll fill in with seed, just pour that in there and then hang him up but I'm gonna finish squiggly on him first and now that it looks sufficiently like just about every school book I had in high school we'll hang him up and see how the birds like it Thanks for stopping by. If you like what we're doing, please like the video. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you want notifications, use the bell icon below. And until next time, Dovigenia.